Welcome to Countards. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the accounting rate of return or the ARR. Now, we have looked at this topic before. We went through an example where we showed you how to calculate the accounting rate of return. But in that example, we're given the net profit. So we just needed to use that one. But many have requested an example where we are given cash flows and we have to work our way towards net profit and then we calculate our accounting rate of return. So the theory that we'll be going through will be the same as that example. So if you have checked that one out, you can just skip through this theory and go to the example that we do. But if you haven't watched the other one, you can just follow along with this one, but it will quickly go through them. What is the accounting rate of return? The accounting rate of return method takes the average accounting profit that the investment will generate and expresses it as a percentage of the average investment in the project as measured in accounting terms. To decide whether the return is acceptable, we must compare the percentage with the minimum required by the business. If the firm has a target ARR or accounting rate of return less than the percentage achieved, then this investment is acceptable, otherwise not. So what are we saying here with the accounting rate of return? Once we have calculated it, the percentage that we'll get, we need to compare it with what the company has set or what they require for the project. So if what we get by calculating it is higher than what the company requires, then we'll accept the project. But if it's lower than the one that is required by the investors, then we will reject the project. So what is the formula for the accounting rate of return? Here it is. It's the average annual profits divided by average investment times 100 divided by 1. Now, the average annual profits is where students usually struggle with. And in the previous example, we were given the net profit. So we just needed to divide that by the number of years to get the average annual profits. But in this one here, we are given cash flows. So that's the difference. But how do we get the average annual profits? In any case, the average annual profits we get by taking the total profits divided by the number of years. So if you are given the profits for the next five years, you're just going to take the total of those profits, you add them all together and divide them by the number of years, and it will give you the average annual profits. And you have your numerator over here. And then how do you get your average investment? Well, before we go there, what if you're given cash flows? What if you're not given the profits where you can just get the total profits and divide it by the number of years? Well, if you're given the cash flows, what you need to do is to take the cash flows or the total cash flows minus the depreciation and you should get your profits. I hope that has made sense. What you want with your formula is to get your total profits. But for you get to get profits, if you're given cash flows, you just take your cash flows and deduct your depreciation. Because cash flows is what you have without depreciation because depreciation is a non-cash item. So if you want to get the profits, if you want to work your way backwards towards the profit, you're just going to take your cash flows, the cash flows that you're given, and you deduct the depreciation and it should have your profits. Very simple. And how do you get your average investments? We Get it by taking the initial investment or how much you need to invest or the company needs to invest in the project plus the salvage value or the residual value and that answer you divide by two and you should have your average investment. So that's also easy. You given the initial investment, you add it to the salvage value. If you have any, if you do not have salvage value, it's just going to be the initial investment plus zero. And then you divide that answer by two and you should have your average investment. And that is how you work with the formula of the average rate of return. Now, let's get into the example and see how we do this. We are told in this example that Discovery Limited is considering a project with a required investment of 500,000 rand. The details of which are below. We are told that the expected useful life is five years and they are using straight line depreciation with a salvage value of 150,000 rand. The targeted accounting rate of return is 14%. The expected net cash inflows are as follows and we are given the net cash inflows from year one all the way to year five and you can see they are all positive. So these are net cash inflows. Now, if we are asked to calculate the accounting rate of return, and that's what we're asked to do here, we are told that based on the accounting rate of return, should the company invest in the project? So we need to answer that question. But for us to answer that question, we'll need to calculate the accounting rate of return. Now, what is the formula for the accounting rate of return? The accounting rate of return is calculated by taking the average annual profits divided by the average investment times 100 divided by 1. And we saw this formula in the previous slide. 
So what do we need? We need the numerator, which is the average annual profits first. And what we have here is the net cash inflows. Now, if we have the net cash inflows, we need to work our way backwards into profits. Okay. And remember, I showed you the formula for working your way backwards into profit. And what we want is the average annual profits. And how do we get that again? We take our total cash flows, meaning we add together all the cash flows from year one all the way to year five. And then we deduct the total depreciation. And then we divide that answer by the number of years. And we should have our average annual profits. I hope it has made sense. So now let's get what is our total Cash flows, we need to add 90,000 plus 100,000 plus 110,000 rand plus 150,000 plus 110,000 rand and should give us our total cash flows. And what is our total depreciation? Well, the total depreciation is the required investment or the initial investment minus the salvage value. And we should have the total depreciation. So we have the required investment of 500,000 rand. We just deduct the salvage value of 150,000 rand. And we should have our total depreciation, which is 350,000 rand. And our average annual profits is the 560,000 rand, which is our total cash flows. We just added all the cash flows from year one all the way to year five. And it gave us 560,000 rand. And then we deduct our total depreciation. And remember, Remember, like I said, I didn't put it here, but the formula for the total depreciation is your initial investment or the required investment, how much you're investing in the project. And in our case, it was 500,000 rand, like I just mentioned, minus the 150,000 rand salvage value. So it's initial investment minus salvage value will give you your total depreciation for the duration of the project which is 350,000 rand. And then you divide that by the number of years. In our case, it was five years. And then we get 42,000 rand. Now we have the numerator, which is the average annual profits. And how do we get our average investment? Well, if you checked out the other lesson, the average investment does not change regardless of whether you're given the cash inflows or you're given the net profit. Our average investment is the initial investment and it's 500,000 rand plus the salvage value and then we take that total we divide by two and we should have our average investment so it's going to be the 500,000 rand plus 150,000 rand divided by two and then you get the 325,000 rand now students are always confused about whether we add or we deduct the salvage value well when you're calculating the average investment you add your salvage value and then once you have that total answer, you divide by two and it should give you your average investment. Now we have our numerator, which is the average annual profits, which gave us an answer of 42,000 rand. And we have our denominator, which is the average investment, which gave us 325,000 rand. And now that we have the both of them, we can now calculate our accounting rate of return, which is 12.92%. The 42,000 rand average annual profits divided by the average investment of 325,000 rand multiplied by 100 divided by 1 gives us an accounting rate of return of 12.92%. Now, the question that we asked there is that based on the accounting rate of return, should the company invest in the project? Well, we are told that the targeted accounting rate of return is 14%. While the accounting rate of return for this particular project is 12.92%. So what have you guessed? If you've guessed that no, we do not accept the project, we reject it, you would be correct because our accounting rate of return is only 12.92%, while our targeted accounting rate of return is 14%, meaning that the company wanted 14%, but this project only gives us 12.92%. So it's lower than what we require. So we will reject the investment or the project. I hope it has made sense. If it was higher than 14%, we would have accepted the project. Now that we are done with this example, let's quickly go and see the advantages and the disadvantages of the accounting rate of return. But first, the advantages. What are some of the advantages? It is relatively easy to calculate, as we've just seen. Data that is needed for the calculation is easily available. Like we just mentioned, you just take the profits and you work around that. And you also take the initial investment together with the salvage value, which you'll usually be given. It takes the whole life of the project into consideration. As we saw, we take the whole life of the project for the five years in, the, in our case, in the example that we just went through, we took it into account where we took the five years and gotten the average annual profit. So it takes the whole life of the project into consideration. 
One other investment appraisal method that does not do that is the payback period, and which we have done. You'll find the link to that lesson in the description below. What are some of the disadvantages of the accounting rate of return? Well, it ignores the time value of money. Remember, here we are dealing with profit and we didn't discount anything, so it does not take time value of money into consideration. The salvage value may not be realistic, and the salvage value is what we hope to recover from whatever we have invested in at the end of the project life. So it may not be realistic. The actual value may not be what we'll actually get. It is based on accounting profits and not on cash flows as we've just seen. We need to use the profits. It is not an actual rate of return to be realized by the investors. A better return would be the cost of capital. And that's where you use the net present value to discount the cash flows and see the returns that you'll actually get. It does not take the size of the investment into consideration. Like we've just seen in the example that we just went through, if someone tells you that the accounting rate of return is 12.92%, you do not know what the size of the project is, whether it's worth 10 million rand or whether it's worth 1,000 rand. It just gives you a percentage. That's why we're saying it does not take the size of the investment into consideration. Unlike the net present value, for instance, where it tells you exactly how much you're getting in rent value. The targeted ARR could be arbitrary, meaning that the targeted ARR set by the company is questionable. We ask ourselves, how do they get the targeted ARR? And how did they compute it or how did they calculate it? That's why we're saying it could be arbitrary. I hope it has made sense. I hope you have gained value from this lesson. And if you have, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers. Thank <laughs> you.